institutions, diplomatic missions, and government or non-government agencies. Now you can stream videos, enjoy video chatting, and download content at broadband speeds. Experience the difference with Gamcel, the only mobile broadband service provider in the country. Gamcel, Yai Borom. Welcome back. People in eastern India have started clearing up the damage from tropical cyclone Fayelin. Tens of thousands of lives may have been saved by a massive evacuation plan put into place before the storm hit. But still, some 20 people across the country died. CNN Somnina with us takes a look at the aftermath of the storm. Here at the popular beach resort of Puri, which is a, a holy site here, and thousands of people have actually uh, returned. They're on the beachfront. They're watching the sunset. Uh, they are here to watch the ocean. Uh, the locals here say for the past two days, this entire beach was completely swept clear. But the vendors are back. They're trying to rebuild their lives. Earlier, we were at the largest slum in Bhubanesha, which is the capital of Orissa, and people are again returning back from their shelters. They've been there for the past two days, but they're removing the trees that have fallen onto their homes. Uh, the water tanks are bad, trying to uh, deliver water to all the residents there. So really uh, a sense of uh, resilience here. People are trying to uh, build their lives again. And of course, an overwhelming sense of uh, relief as well because the damage is not as much as it could have been. So Sumnima, you're seeing people return to their homes, but still half a million people are homeless after the storm swept through over the weekend. What is the government doing to try to help them? The government has promised uh, to uh, compensate a lot of these families, the, wor the ones who are, of course, were suspected. They've said they will provide at least 50 kilos of rice to each family. They will also uh, assess the damage that was done onto their homes and then help them to rebuild their homes. They're, but their focus right now is really uh, on the roads, clearing the roads from all the trees so they can uh, send food aid to the more remote areas of this region and, of course, also uh, to bring in electricity to these homes. 15,000 kilometers uh, of uh, electricity or electrical lines uh, were affected, so the priority now is to bring in electricity again to these homes. And we see all the debris in the roadways there, so trying to get to these areas and trying to get rescue materials obviously is such a challenge. Now, rescuers are being praised for mobilizing those ma massive evacuations early because the death toll could have been much higher. Uh, how huge of an effort was this to get people out of their homes before the storm arrived? Well, in at least three days before the storm arrived, uh, rescue workers here or authorities were really on the ground going door to door telling people to leave their homes to evacuate to higher ground uh, evacuating to uh, normally shelters government shelters and schools that have turned into shelters uh, for this period so a uh, door to door uh, the authorities were going they were also uh, advertising on uh, television channels here local television channels here they were also sending SMS text messages to people here. So a lot of people here say they were well aware that the cyclone was coming, they were prepared for this, and that's why the damage is not as significant. And many people here say uh, they're not. I mean, they were scared, of course, about the cyclone, but because they'd experienced uh, that damage in 1999, they were well prepared uh, for this particular cyclone. Pauline. Yeah, and back then. The Israeli military says it has discovered an illegal tunnel running into the country from Gaza, the third discovery over the year. More than a kilometer underground, the Israeli military says the tunnel could only be used for one purpose. Jim Clancy has more from Jerusalem. CNN Hamas began evacuating police stations and some office buildings in the Gaza Strip, fearing a retaliatory strike after Israel uncovered what it branded to be a terror tunnel. The tunnel was clearly not designed for the smuggling of food and fuel, and it came with a warning. 
If the Hamas will carry out a terror operation, an operation from a terror tunnel, it will pay a heavy price, and I think Gaza will look different if such an attack is carried out. The tunnel extended 1.7 kilometers, about a mile, from the Khan Yunus refugee camp in northern Gaza, across the border into Israel, and near the kibbutz of Ein Hashlosha. Israeli TV Channel 10 broadcast video that showed the tunnel, which was at least 18 meters deep wired for electricity and communications and high enough for a man to stand walk or run through it was fully lined with an estimated 500 tons of concrete on the top and both sides israel announced it was halting supplies for concrete and construction materials going into gaza an israeli reporter who was inside the tunnel said he saw markings and dates indicating the tunnel had been completed in july Israeli Defense Forces published a statement saying the most likely use for such a tunnel would be to kidnap Israeli soldiers or civilians and take them back into Gaza, hoping to trade them for Palestinian prisoners. We're talking about a whole industry and not a small group that is organizing it. This is a terror industry in every way recognizable. A similar tunnel was used to kidnap IDF soldier Gilad Shalit in June of 2006. It ended five years later with Israel releasing more than 1,000 prisoners who were collectively accused of killing hundreds of Israelis. This latest tunnel discovery increases fears on the Israeli side for its sheer size and sophistication. The Israeli military says it is operating under the assumption there are more tunnels out there. Jim Clancy, CNN, Jerusalem. Well, Sundays in France have long been a day of that mean. No shops and supermarkets must remain closed by law. But will people be keen to see stores open on Sundays? This traditional day of rest may be about to change. Senator Jim Biederman has more from France. Ah, uh, Sunday in France. A day of rest to take a deep breath after the rigors of the previous week and to mentally prepare for that 35-hour work week ahead. A day to be with the family or work on personal development. But a day to shop? The government here is trying to figure out what to do after a court ruling which orders some home improvement stores to shut down on Sunday in compliance with a work law drawn up a century ago. The problem is that according to one survey, four out of five French favor the stores being open. And store owners say Sunday opening boosts the economy. Stores need to be open on Sundays. People, they work all week long. They run all week. I prefer that stores be open on Sunday, definitely. What's more, employees like Marad Tarb, who are often paid extra for Sunday work, say it's one way to make ends meet. Money talks, you know. When you, pay on, when you work on Sunday, you get about 150% of your salary. So it's more interesting for us to work on Sundays. But unfortunately, it's quite difficult to get all the Sundays because there's too many people who want to work on Sundays. Tarb and others who want to work Sundays are part of a protest movement trying to get the government to leave the stores alone. They say it would be ridiculous to do otherwise with high unemployment and an uncertain economy. Nonetheless, the government is now imposing fines on the stores that stay open in defiance of the law. Opposing Sunday opening hours is an unlikely coalition on both ends of the political spectrum. Neither conservative Catholics nor leftist unionists and politicians think people should work on Sunday. A spokeswoman for the radical left front party says workers need to be protected. I think everyone wants the rule to be that on Sunday you rest. Um, the government obviously needs to, to put its hands in, in, the, in, the, in the, um, the theme because it's about working rights. If not, you will have, you know, everything will be open and then we will just have the American way of life. I think that's sad. For the moment, the government has dodged a bullet by naming the former head of the French post office to study the question of Sunday opening hours. His report is due in November. Meanwhile, the stores that stay open in defiance of the court ruling are paying hefty fines each weekend they do so, leaving the French to contemplate whether that American way of life would ever be at home here. Jim Bitterman, CNN, Paris. The report there by Jim Bitterman takes to take close to another break. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 